Will this water-based spray paint work on a canvas? Keep watching to find out. Hi guys, I'm John and welcome to my channel and thanks for stopping by and watching. So in this spray paint art video, I'm going to be trying out this water-based spray paint. The Molotow covers all water-based acrylic spray paint. And I'm going to be using it on the canvas this time. Because last time I tried it, I painted it on glossy card, which is this painting here. And what I found out is while painting this painting, that the formula of the water-based spray paint soaked into the card and left all ripples on the painting while I was painting it. You can find that video here in the cards. So for this video I'm going to be using a canvas to see if it's any different from painting on glossy card. I'm also going to be changing the stock cap on the cans to a skinny cap. Because last time I used the cans with the stock cap it just let a bit too much paint out. So before I start painting on the canvas I'm just going to show you what the stock cap sprays like and what the skinny cap I'm going to be using like on this piece of paper here. So I've got the stock cap on here first. And as you can see there, it lets quite a bit of paint out. So I'm going to take the stock cap off and I'm going to put a skinny cap on. As you can see there, the skinny caps produced a lot thinner line and lay a lot less paint out. So I'll just give you a quick look of this. So that's the stock cap and that's the skinny cap. And you can see how much difference it is. So I'll stick that out of the way for now. So this is going to be a how-to tutorial as well. So I'm going to be talking as well as painting in this video. So what I'm going to be using for this tutorial video is I'm going to be using some lid stencils. These are going to be for the planets. I'm going to be using some plastic sheets. These are from the bag that I've cut up so it's easier to use in the painting. These, this is going to be used to make texture in the painting. I'm going to be using this metal scraper. It's going to be used to make stars and stuff like that. I'm going to be using a sponge. I'm going to be using this to make trees with. I've got some small pieces of card here. This is going to be used to make the mountains. I've got some paint brushes as well. This is going to be used to put some black paint down and now you'll see in the video what I use the paint brushes for. I'm going to be using a pally knife. This is to sign a painting with at the end. I'm going to be using this cone shaped food tub with the hole in the bottom. These are going to, this is going to be used to make smaller stars. And some spare pieces of card. This is going to be to spray some spare paint on. And the colours I'm going to be using are pure black, signal yellow, signal white and signal red. So I'll just be using these four colours for this painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some planets to the painting. I'm going to add some up here. So I'm going to add one here I think. I'm going to put... Something like that, around there. So we'll get a colour, I'll get the yellow. We'll just spray around these lids. We'll take them off for now. Also, when you're painting on the canvas, it does soak some of the paint up at first when you spray it on. So that's one of the differences between glossy card or glossy paper and a canvas, but glossy paper doesn't soak the paint up, whereas a canvas will at first. So you may have to add a bit more paint to the canvas. So now we've got the outlines of the planets, we'll add some colours in. So I think I'll put some yellow in first. So we'll spray a bit more paint on here. Like I said, it'll soak up into a canvas. So 
And I'll put a bit of red in there. Now what I'm going to do is cover it with some black and some white. Now whatever material that you're using to make your texture with, like so I'm going to be using a plastic bag, so we'll just crunch it up to get some lines on it for your texture. Like that, and we'll just get it on and give it a light rub. So I like how that's turned out. The texture on it is quite nice, nice looking, I like that. So what we're going to do now is add some highlights and shadows to it. So we'll do the white first, the white highlight here on this side. So I'm going to have the light coming in from here. So what we're going to do is press the cap down lightly to get your mist effect. So like that, that worked well for mist, these skinny caps. So now the shadowed area this side. So that's the highlight and shadow on that planet. So before you place the lid stencil on, you want the paint to be completely dry so the lid stencil doesn't stick to the wet paint. You can leave this to naturally dry or you can use something to speed up the process. So for this video I'm going to be speeding up the process by using a heat gun. So what you want to do is, if you're going to use a heat gun or a hair dryer or anything like that, hold it quite a bit away from your painting. And do it so the paint's dry. You don't want to hold it in one spot, else you'll start burning the paint. So that paint is dry now using the heat gun. Fast way of drying your paint. So now the paint's dry, we'll put the first lid stencil on for this planet. As you can see there, some of the paint's coming away. Still a bit wet in places, but it's dry enough to put the lid stencil on. So I'm going to put that there. So that's the first lid on. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to like have a moon or something coming from behind the planet. So for this one, I'm just going to use black and white. So put a bit of white down first, I think. And then a bit of black. Just be careful when you're next to the lid stencils so you don't get any leaking under your lid stencil. I'm going to use another sheet of the plastic that I'm using from a bag that I've cut off. Crunch it up to get some texture on it and we'll just place it over the top. Just be careful when you're next to your lid stencil. I'm going to go over that again I think. One more. So I like how that's looking. So I'm going to do some highlights and shadows on that one. On the moon. So just press the cap lightly. With some highlights there. And then I'm going to put a shadowed area here up against this lid. So spray your light. So now we'll go back to the heat gun and just dry it a bit. You only need to give it a quick burst really. This paint seems to dry pretty fast. So now we'll get the next lid stencil and place it where you want your moon to go. I'm going to have mine there. So now that's the two planets done, we'll move on to the background. So for this, I'm going to get some black first. 
I'm just going to spray it all black to about here, somewhere here. I think this is working a lot better on the canvas than it did on the glossy card. It's also got an ultra matte finish, this paint has. And it also dries pretty fast as well. Well, in fact, it dries really fast. So we'll see what it's like when we do some other techniques further on in the painting. Like I said, I'm going to add some water to this painting as well. And some mountains. See what this water-based spray paint's like. We're doing other stuff apart from planets and space. So that's the background done black. So I think I might add a bit of colour somewhere to this. Um, I think I might just, just add a bit of red. Not sure where. Just put a bit of red in it, see what it's like. Just over top. Yeah, I think just put some red there. there, a bit of yellow. It's up to you where you put in your background. Oh, I quite like that, so I'm going to leave that like that. So like I said, I'm going to be putting a star in, and I think I'm going to put a star here somewhere. So what we're going to use for the star is this paint scraper here and the white spray paint. So what you want to do is spray the white paint here somewhere in the middle of your scraper as the overspray will be producing your lines on your star. Yeah, so I'll put it here I think. Gonna have to move round a bit. I'm not sure whether you can see this because I'm in front of a light now. So I pressed the cap too far on these two other lines, so I'm just going to go over the first two lines again, make them a bit more lighter. And as you can see, just watch out for the build-up of paint on your scraper so it doesn't run off and drop onto your paint and leave big white blobs. So I'll just give that a wipe off, just in case. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to go over these two lines again. Right, so that's better. So that's the lines for the star there. And what I'm going to do first before I spray the white dot from out of the cap on, onto the star, I'm just going to get this back again. I'm just going to see what the white dot spray is like. Because I don't really want a big white dot there. So that's a bit too big what I want for this star. As you can see, there's the dots it produced. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to use this food tub with the hole in the bottom. I'm going to spray the centre of the star through this. So 
So what you do is you hold this above the star in the middle where all the lines cross over about an inch, inch and a half over and you just spray through it and what I'm going to do is move round as I spray it pull some paint through the cap So I like the centre of that star, it's not too big. If I'd used this straight of the cap it would have been a lot bigger and I might have lost all the lines in the star. So that's why I've used this food tub to do the middle of a star. I think it's turned out really nice. So now we have a big star in, we're just going to add a few small stars in places. So with the white again we'll spray some on our fingers here. And just fl flick a fl few in the background. Just put a few down here. So I like that amount of stars, so I'm going to leave that like that. Right, that's the background done. So we'll take the lid stencils back off. So I'll lift this one off first. Put that there. So I really like how that plan is turned out. I really like the texture. We'll take the moon off there. And I also like that, that's really nice as well. So what I think I might do here is I'm going to put some colour over the bottom of this planet here. So I think what I'll do is, I'll use some red first. Do like a mist here somewhere. Just like fade the planet into the background. So I quite like that. So I'm going to go to the yellow and do the same, mist a bit on top. Just a bit of red on the top. So I'm really liking the way this is looking at the moment. I like the mist here in front of the planet. What I think I might do is I might just add a bit of white here. Like I said, it's trial and error when you're painting. Just do what you want. It may work, it may not. We'll give it a go. So just a bit of light mist there. Yeah, I think that's looking nice. So I'm really happy with this at the moment. That white worked really well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some mountains to the painting. So what we'll do is get a piece of this spare card. I'm going to spray some black on it. So this paint looks thick paint. As you can see it doesn't run very well. Run much. So we'll see what it's like when we use a paintbrush with it. So I'm going to add the mountains here somewhere I think. This will I use a paintbrush for to add the black on the mountains. So 
we get some paint on the paint brush. And the thing what I'm going to do is add a mountain here somewhere and then work way down here. I'm not sure. Just go with the flow here. I think one there. Front of this planet. So what we're, going, what we're doing now is just putting out lines, the, the black for the, for the mountains. So I'll do this one a bit bigger. I'll step it like that, I think. Something like that. It is a lot thicker paint than I'm used to, this paint is. It's surprising how well it dries being a thick paint, to be honest. It dries pretty fast. As you saw in the background when I touched it, it was dry within 20 seconds of summer. That could be because I was misting it. It wasn't producing much much paint. So we'll just add the black to the mountains here, black them out. So there's no rush when you're doing this. Just take your time. No point in rushing. Just enjoy while you're painting. So looking at that, I might, I might bring this one up slightly higher, I think. It's always good to step away from a painting and have a look. See if you can add anything else or whatever. So yeah, I'm going to add it. I'm going to add this a bit bigger, I think. Let me cover that up a minute. Bit more black on the brush. I think I'll do it like this now. So like that. I think I might just add a small one here. And then just bring it off to the edge of a painting like that. Quickly move your paintbrush across the bottom. So I like the way their mountains are looking there. The base coat for them, the black. So just see this piece of card here with the black and the paintbrush out of the way. Now the base coat is down for the mountains. We're going to add some white to it on this side here. So the paint in places is still a bit wet, which is alright. That can mix with the white and give a different shade of white, like a grey colour and white. So it's not just all white. So for this we'll get another piece of spare card. And we'll get the white. And we'll spray some on. I have noticed with this white, and it happened when I tried it before in the last painting, but it does this, it bubbles. I'm not sure why it does that, but can you see there? I don't know why it does that. The other paint doesn't seem to do it. So to add the white to the mountains, we're going to use a piece of small card like this. And all we're going to do is dip it into the white paint. You don't want too much on it, so you can always 
take a bit off. Now what we're going to do is just go over a bit of a black on this side. So you get your piece of card. I'm going to start this big one here. And just rub it over the black areas a bit. You don't want too much on your card. Else you'll have big blobs of white paint in places. So when you're doing this, just take your time. Like I said, there's no rush. Just enjoy what you're painting. So as you can see, the mountain's starting to form there with the white paint. And some of the blacks mixed in with the white. So it gives you like different shades. So I'll leave that one for now like that and I'll move on to the others. It's the same process for them all. There's a bit too much paint on this card here so I'll just go back wipe a bit off. When you're doing mountains I always find it best to step away from the canvas and just have a look at it at times. So that's that one done. Move on to this one. Just keep an eye on how much paint you got on your card. And the next one. So all I'm doing that is just rubbing the card over black paint. So you get like your mountain shapes. I'll bring that one a bit further down so it looks a bit snow or whatever on your mountains. Now we're going to go to these ones here. So I'm going to swap the card over this. So as you can see, you can use different pieces of different size ones. So I'm going to go to a smaller one here now. So just get a bit of white paint on it. I might just put a bit up here on here. And then, because we're using a smaller piece, it's easier to do these smaller ones. A bit more on the card. Now what I'm going to do for this one, I'm just going to pull it down a bit. So it looks like it's a... Recess where like snow or whatever's caught in it. A bit like a canyon or something. I don't know. Alright, so I'm liking that one. So what I'm going to do is just do this one here. Just a bit of snow on the top. more uh, things
So that's a bit of white on each of the mountains. Just going to have a look at it. And I think I might add a bit more to this bigger mountain. So I'm going to use a small piece of card. I think I might just bring it out a bit like that. And just fade a bit of a white out. Put a bit on there. Like it's a peak. Bit more white there. So I'm just going to go over the other mountains as well. After looking at it, I think I might just add a bit more to these tops. Get down there, I think. Just bring it down a bit. I'll just fade out there. I'll do now this one. So the paint's drying out a bit there, getting a bit thick, so I'm just going to spray some fresh stuff here. What I'm going to do is get a fresh piece of card. So another piece of card there. Just remember not to have too much on the card. Bring that down there, I think. Just add a bit more here, I think. Just like that, because that's the biggest one here. Bring it down a bit like that. This last one here. Bring that one. Just put a ledge there or something to thing. Just bring that out a bit. So I think that'll do for the mountains, I'm liking them. So what you could do if you were using more than just these four colours here, you could put a bit of blue or something like that on the black side here, on the shadowed area, to make them stand out a bit more. But because I'm just using these four colours, I'm just going to leave a black there and have a white on the highlighted side. I still think it works really well, just like this. Also, when you do mountains for the first time or something like that, they might not turn out the way you like them. So just keep persevering with them and you'll get there. It took me a while. This was like my nemesis, mountains. And I'd like to improve a lot more on the mountains. But it's just practice. And the more you practice, the better you get at something. So now we have the mountains out of the way. Done. 
We're going to move on and add a bit of mist here at the bottom of the mountains using the white. So the technique for doing the mist here on the bottom of the mountains is the same as you'd highlight a planet or something with a white. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Move these here yeah? so it doesn't get no paint on them when you're misting. Then what we're going to do is go back and forth at the bottom of the mountains, pressing the cap lightly. Get like some mist on the bottom of your mountains and add a bit of depth to your painting. So I quite like that. And what you could also do, you could add a bit of yellow or something. I don't know, let's give it a go. Only a quick mist. Like I say, it's up to you while you're doing your painting, trial and error. Bit of yellow, now I'm going to put a bit of white over the top of it. Right, quite like that. So that's a mist done at the bottom of the mountains. Bit of an air or something there on the painting. Well, that's off. With the mountains done, we'll move on. And I think we'll add some trees here at the bottom of the mountains. Some trees in the distance. So what we'll do is we'll get a card with a black on it, a spare piece of card. We'll add some more black to it here, some fresh stuff because the other's dried out. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to use this flat brush to do the trees. What we want to do is put some on your paintbrush, wipe a bit off, and the motion we're going to be doing is, I'll get this piece, and we're going to go up and down, so it's up and down fast, so you get like some tree shapes. So load some onto your brush, some paint. I'm going to start here and go across. So we're going to move fast across and move up and down. So it looks like trees. Don't forget to keep going back and adding a bit more paint. Because as you can see there, it starts off black. And as you go more and more across the sheet, the canvas, the paint starts, paintbrush loses a paint. So if you notice in the videos that I make, the spray paint art videos that I do, I don't rush, don't rush in them. I just take my time. So find that best. There's no point doing a painting in eight minutes if you're enjoying what you're painting. So I just enjoy it. So I just um, take my time with it. Like I said, there's no rush. Just enjoy what you're painting. Plus taking your time, things come out better and neater and stuff like that. So we'll go all the way across, going up and down like this with a paintbrush. Just quick movements up and down and move across as you're doing it. So there are all the trees and as you can see, some are darker than the others. So what I normally do is get some black on the paintbrush again. And then we're just going to go back over them again. 
come a bit further down from the ones you put before on and then the blacker ones at the front look closer than the ones you did before So I like how that's looking, I like the trees in front of the mountains there, it like pushes the mountains back a bit, gives some depth to the painting. So that's the trees using this flat brush here, the ones in the distance. So we'll move that back out of the way now. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be adding some water here at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to wipe bit of this canvas off here, a few bits of air on here and stuff like that. So that's all clean, got rid of them airs. The first thing we'll do is get the black, I'm just going to tidy the bottom of these trees up. So we're just going to go across the bottom, just spraying light. So that's them trees added, the black added to the bottom of the trees. Now we're going to add some water to it. So we're going to be doing the water with the red, yellow and the white. I think I'll add some black as well to it. So I'll add the red first. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we'll see. So like I said, we're going to have to have a bit of extra paint to this because it's the canvas, so it'll soak in. I'll have to be quick because I don't know how fast this paint will dry. So we've got a bit of red there. Bit of yellow. Not sure how it'll turn out, but like I said, give it a go. I'm just going to put some black around this edge. And this one here. Now, what we're going to do for this, we're going to get our fingers and just give it a rub across back and forth. But I think this is already dry, mostly. Part of it's dry, like here on the top. So I'm just going to go back over it in places. I might have put a bit too much paint down as well in some of it. I'll just go over here on this edge. Keep wiping your finger so it's clean, so you don't spread all the paint, all the colours that's on your fingers back onto the painting. So with that being dry there, I'm going to leave how like it is. Yeah, I like that, I think. I like how that's looking. For the first time using a water based spray paint for water, I quite like how that's turned out. Still a bit thick on this side, what I might do is 
Might just try and pull a bit of it off. See quite a lot there on the edge of this. I might just blend it in a bit, take a bit off. You can always cover this up in a minute. Just bring a bit of this yellow over. There's no rush when you're doing things. Right, so I'm liking the way that water's looking now. Took the build up of paint here off this side. So, what we can do now is we can get the black and we can just darken these edges up just slightly. I'm not going to put much in. Cap spitting a bit there. Let me just, if you get a build up of paint on the cap, on the nozzle. It might start spitting a bit like it has there, so all you do is just scrape it off. Scrape it off with a Stanley knife or something like that, craft knife. Clean the nozzle. So you've got no paint on the nozzle where the paint's coming out. So still spitting a bit. There's a bit of a spat there. I'll pull that off, just try and blend that back in now. Yeah, we've got a few spits uh, off it. Just try and get rid of that. In fact, what I might do is I might swap the cap on this to a clean one. Because I don't want this spitting all on here because he'll show up. So we'll go back to this side, see, stop spitting now, put a new cap on. So I've darkened that up there. I'm going to be going back over the bottom of here in a minute. But I just wanted to put the black in here so I can darken this area up before I do something down here. So now we've got the water added. I'm going to put like a bit of a mist here between the water and the trees now to break it up. So for this I'm going to be using the white. Oh, I also forgot to mention, you can use one of these as well when you're painting. This is called a decorated scraper, paint scraper. It's a lot longer than the others, and you can use this upon your painting when you're doing like the mist between the water and the trees or something like that. You can either use this, or you can just mist this straight out of the can, like that, across. So for this one, I think I'm going to use this decorator's tool, paint scraper, to put the mist in. So we're going to place it where we want the mist. So I'm going to have it there, I think. Somewhere like that, just place it on. Make sure the paint's dry before placing this on, because you'll dig into a wet paint, and when you pull it off, it'll leave a line across your sheet. So what we're going to do is spray the white here on the scraper because the overspray will make the mist. So I quite like that. That's one way of adding the mist with this decorator's tool. Like I said, you can also go over it with that and just mist it out that way. But I'm going to leave that like that because I like it. So now we've added the planets and mountain, the trees and the water. 
I'm gonna put something um, like some rocks or something down here. So for this, I'm just gonna use um, just gonna use black and white. I think just put like some rocks or something. So what I'm gonna do now, just gonna have some small ones here. So we'll get the white first. It most probably pull some of the colour back through underneath, but that's all right. So I think I'm just going to have fit here, I think. Something like that there. Something there like that. Then the black. See how these work for making rocks. Some black over there. And some black there. Right, so I'm going to use a plastic sheet from a bag that I've cut up to make the rocks. So there's a bit of paint on this, but it should be all right. So we'll just crunch it up, get a few lines in it, a few texture. And then what we'll do is we'll place it over the top just to make some rocks. A bit more. So as you can see, some of the reds come through on there, but that's all right. Now we're going to this side. So you want a clean piece for this. That's a clean piece. And do the same, just place it on. So I like how them rocks are looking there. So now we've added some rocks, we can add a few highlights to the top of these rocks. I'm not sure this is going to work because it might not be wet enough underneath because the paint seems to dry really fast. So to make the highlights, we're just going to get a pally knife. And we're going to just scrape it along to give you some highlights. So it's working all right. The highlight's going to be red because with a canvas, it soaked the paint up. So there's paint in the canvas and it's red because I put the red down first. So it'll give you like red highlights. So that's alright, just so I can show you. So whatever your colour you put down first on the canvas is the colour that will soak up most of the time. So when you do like highlights or something like this, you'll show the red up or whatever colour that's on there. So I think that'll do for this side. Surprised how well that worked for highlights. I thought I wouldn't get anything from it. Because the paint dries pretty fast. So same on this one. Just go around the edge. As you can see, the, the red's showing through again. Got a bit of build up of paint there. Just pull that off. When you're doing your highlights like this, just keep an eye on your scraper. Build up a paint on it. So that's the highlights done on your rocks using a pally knife. And like I said, whatever colour's gone down first on the canvas will show back through when you do something, scraping with a pally knife, making rock highlights or anything like that. So now we've added some highlights to the rocks. We're going to put some trees in now. I'm going to put a few on either side, I think. So we'll go back to the black. I'm going to get a new piece of card. Spare card, spray some on it. What I do first when I'm doing these trees is I put a line in first as a guide of where I'm having the tree, the branches on the tree or the leaves. So what I'm going to do first, put a couple of lines in where I want these trees.
So just put some on your paintbrush. I like to put some on my paintbrush and then do it on the spare piece of card. Make sure I've not got too much on it. So that's that there. And um, I think I'm going to have a big one here first. So what I'll do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up like that. Put a bit more on. I'm going to have a first tree there, a bigger one there. Just going to go over this again, darken it up a bit. So I've one about that size there. And then... I think I might have one here. Not as tall. Uh, I'll do them two there like that. I'll do two on that side first for now and then this side I don't really want to cover these mountains up here so I'm going to bring these trees a bit smaller and it might not show up as well because it's black here near the bottom so I think I'll put one here have a small one there like that and one like that I'll, I'll put a third one here so I'll have them different sizes there like that I could also yeah why not I'll add a third one here as well right on the edge here That one I'm going to have a bit sideways, I think. So now we've added the lines for your trees with a paintbrush. I'm going to add the leaves, branches to the trees. And for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a piece of sponge like this. What I do is I fold it in my hand so I get a small piece of sponge and then this is how I make the leaves on the trees. So what we'll do is we'll get some paint on the sponge like this, just dab it in. I'm just going to take a bit of it off because the sponge will soak some of the paint up when you add it to it first. So like that, that's enough paint on the sponge, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to side this big one here and all I'm going to be doing is just tapping it onto the sheet, onto the canvas, where the leaves are going to go. So I'm going to start thin at the top and as you work down get wider and wider. Just pressing as you go. Don't forget to keep adding it to your more paint of a sponge. It seems to dry pretty fast this on this sponge. Yeah, it's like dried there. First time I'm using the sponge with this water-based paint. So it's like dried there already. So it's like come to a mush. So I'm going to have to use a few sponges on here, I think. Like I said, when you're using a new paint or a new kind of paint, it's just trial and error. So I've got a clean piece of sponge, so... I might have to work a bit fast with this, so the trees might not be as good as I want them to be. 
Yeah, it's just drying. Can you see there? It's dry again. So I'm not sure this will work with a sponge. We'll just carry on using the sponge. We'll just have to use more sponges. It's going to take a bit longer. Right, so, another new piece. Because with it all building up, it doesn't give you... It just gives you like a... Yeah. So it's built up straight away. So just like a mush there. Just dry in a mush. Oh, well. Have some more black. So I'm gonna have to move pretty fast, like I said. Yeah, so you're not getting see it's just every time. Right, I'm going to do this tree with this sponge and I think I might have to swap onto the um, something else. I'll just finish it off if I can. Yeah, I'm going to have to swap this with something. I'm going to use a fan brusher thing for the rest of the tree. See what that's like. So like I said, I'm going to be using the fan brush now for the rest of these trees. I do prefer using the sponge when I'm doing the trees and the fan brush. But because it's not working right, it's building up and drying straight away on this sponge and just clogging up. So I'm getting no texture really on it when I'm pressing it down. Because you lose all the bits of a sponge and makes a texture. So I'm going to do the rest with this fan nut brush. Plus you can see how different a sponge is to a fan brush. When doing the trees. I wasn't planning on using a fan brush but never mind right so we'll get some paint on this fan brush not like that now we'll do the same start small at the top and as we move down get bigger and bigger got a bit too much paint on there So I just don't like using the fan brush. I think you get better with a uh, with a sponge. So what we're doing is moving down, and as we move down, get wider and wider. Let's go over a bit of these rocks here. So I'm just going to put this one a bit higher, I think, this one.
So as you can see the difference between a sponge and a fan brush. I much prefer the sponge. But like I said, the sponge isn't working very good for this. I might try it again in a minute on this small tree over here. So I'll carry on with the trees and the fan brush. I'll just add a bit more paint to this. Like I said, they do look a lot different to the ones with the sponge. Start the top again, small. Bit too much paint on there. Like I said, I don't really like using a fan brush for the trees. It's become a bit wider as we come down. Have a little rang in this water. I think I might just extend the top of it. Take a bit off there. So that's that one done with a fan brush. Like I said, I'm going to give this sponge another try. Not sure how well it'll work. Maybe probably do the same as that other one. So I'm going to get some some smaller bits ready to keep swapping over. So we've got a few, fair amount of sponge here. So I'm going to do this small one with a sponge. And also it'll give you a bit of variety of different types of trees in the painting as well. Using a fan brush and a sponge. So we'll get some paint on this sponge. And we'll load up. So we start here with the top. Small. So as you can see it's already clogged up there, dried out. So I'll go to the other side and make it some more paint on it. It's a shame it does that but it must be like the formula in the paint would have been like a thickish paint of a water based formula. I'm not really sure. I've not had uh, it happen before when I've used spray paint. But it could be just because it's fast drying paint. It dries that fast. I'll add some more there because the sponge has soaked most of it up. Go back to another piece, just finish this tree off. They're not as good as I want them to be, but trees with a sponge. But I've never done anything with a wall based spray paint like this with trees or anything like that using a sponge. So you won't know whether things work or not until you actually try them. So I'm just going to bring this out a bit more here. Looks a bit too symmetrical. Thing that I'll do, I'm not going to do any more on that because the sponges just keep drying. See, normally I just use one sponge for all these trees, and these are all dried. That's dried solid, that has, so that'd be no good. Wouldn't leave no pattern on your tree. There's an handful of sponges there gone through. That's alright. 
Right back to the fan brush. Blow it with some paint. Take some off because you don't want too much on there. Just blow this because some of this dry paint off the sponges on the painting. Right, so I'll do this tree here. So start the top thin. I just kind of snake down as we're doing it. Go wider and wider as we could go down. That's going to be a big wide tree here, so it's going to cover most of this sponge one up. A bit too wide, I'm going to have to extend that, I think, up a bit. I'll just press this down as we go in. All trees are different, so you can have skinny ones, fat ones, whatever. I'm going to extend that a bit with that and then start again up here. Thin like that. See this paint's dried almost, This all this is dried all over here and that that I've just put on there, that's dry. That's dry already. I'm really surprised at how, how fast this paint dries on the canvas. Took a bit longer to dry on glossy paper because it soaked into the paper so it was still wet, the paper and that. But on this canvas it's drying within like, I don't know, 30 seconds or something from when I'm putting it on. So just add a bit more on here. And with it being like an ultra matte finish, it's drying matte. I have noticed on this tree and now it's dry because like it was clogging up the sponge, building it all up. Some of the sponge has come back onto the painting. It's giving a bit of texture to the tree. I quite like that to be honest, the texture on the tree. So now we'll move on to this last tree here. And this one I'm going to do the fan brush. So I'm going to extend this one, I think. Where's that other brush? Here. So I'm going to extend this one up, I think, just underneath here. Put a bit more on there. Yeah, I think I'll have it there. So it's taller than the other trees. So take some paint off his fan brush. Don't want too much on there. So just take your time when you're doing this, like anything in the painting. Take your time and enjoy it. And try and make this one a bit thinner until I get further down. Yeah, I'll go over the tree, the other tree, but that's alright. Because as you get further down with the trees, the thicker it'll go, they'll kind of all merge together. Maybe because I've got the black here on the edge, you're not going to see the these trees here much because it's all drying matte. So I'll have a look at that there. So I quite like that there. So. And just a bit more. Try and 
trying so you can see the tree. You can, you're not going to see it on this black. Just put a bit of top on this one. So I like the way these trees have turned out. So as you can see, I've got the two here with the sponge and they look totally different to the ones with the fan brush. But that's all right, mix it up a bit in the trees, different types of trees. See this tree here, the last one I've just done, is, is dry there. Look, I'm touching that. It's already dry most of it, there's a bit of wet here. But all these other ones are dry already. I'm really surprised how fast this dries on this canvas. So with the trees done, um, I think I'm just going to add a bit of black here at the bottom. Not much, just to fade these rocks out or whatever the trees are sitting on. I'm just a black for the canvas. So I like that, I like how that's looking at the bottom. I'm going to add one final thing to the painting I think, before I finish it. I'm going to be using this food tub again. And I'm going to be adding, I think I might add a colourful star, a couple of white ones, bigger ones than these ones reflect on with the fingers. So, I think I'll put one up here. I think I might do a yellow one. Um, just put it here. And I might just have one here as well, glowing through. So just press it lightly. So like that, so we'll go to a white, and we'll just add a bit of white into the middle. Do this one first, so I can get in the middle. And go round to this one. So I like how they're looking, and I like how the painting's looking now, so I'm going to finish it there, and I'm going to sign it. So I'm going to sign it with this paint pen here, because I know this paint's dry here, so the palette knife's not going to work. So give it a shake, pull some paint through. So I, like I said, I'm just going to sign it here with this paint pen. And that's a painting finished. So I'm really surprised how well this water-based spray paint has worked on this canvas. I really like the way this painting has turned out. I really like it. So while I've still got this painting here, I'll just give you a closer look. So you can see the difference in the trees, the fan brush trees and the sponge trees. And the mountains and the planet. And the planet behind it. The moon and the star. I really like how this has turned out. So while I've got this still here, I'll move these out of the way. Put them over here. So I'll put that there. And I'll bring the one I did with the glossy card. On the glossy card. I'm not sure where you can see it. Let me just move it over a bit more. This paint. Clean some of this off. Get rid of these sponges, a pallet knife. 
So I'll move this over so you can see both of them together. So as you can see, this one was painted on the glossy paper. It's still got the odd wrinkle in it because the paper was wet from the formula. So it'll never go flat again. Perfect. There's still raises in it here and there. And then this was a water-based spray paint on canvas. I really like how it's turned out. I, really, I think it works really well on canvas. A lot better than it did on the gloss paper. And also changing the caps on them to a skinny cap worked a lot better. You had more control over the paint and where it was going. And it gave a bit of better mist effect and stuff like that on the painting. So all in all, I think the Molotov covers all acrylic water-based spray paint worked a lot better on the canvas than it did on the gloss paper. And if I was going to use it to paint with all the time, I'd paint on the canvas rather than the gloss paper. Because you've got no soaking issues or any of the ripples that you did with the paper one here. And also, I'll let this one dry the planets and that, so it gives you neater planets. Not like this one on here where I put the lid stencils on when the paint was wet and it's left like rings on your planets. So if you let the paint dry, you get planets like this, real nice planets. And then if you rush and put the lid stencils on while the paint is wet, you'll get these rings, these marks around your planets. The only thing I did find with the water-based spray paint was when I was using the sponge for the trees, it just didn't work. It dried out really fast and just clogged up the sponge. But apart from that, it worked well for everything else. So the answer to the question is, will the water-based spray paint work on a canvas? And yes, it does. As you can see here, it's worked really well. So I hope you enjoyed watching and found the information in this video helpful. And if so, don't forget to give it a like. And please subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. And once again, thank you for stopping by and watching. I hope to see you all in the next spray paint art video. Have a great day, take care and bye for now.